Leveling is probably the most tedious thing right now in Modern Warfare 2, especially of what's noticeable. And yes, while we've got a whole year to do it, if you're like me, you're wanting to rank up your stuff ahead of Warzone 2, you're wanting to get a jump start on those camo grinds, you want to know how to rank up your weapons as fast as possible. And today, we're running down the best methods as of right now, some pending in a little luck in certain weapons, you can go from level 1 to max in under an hour. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below. How's your level progression going? Got any gold guns just yet? Let me know down below, but if you enjoyed the video, you find it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on the video. Let's see if we can hit 5,000 on this one once again. If you're also new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all things Modern Warfare 2. We've got so much on the horizon still, and we're now pushing towards 600,000 subscribers, as crazy as that sounds to say. Appreciate all the love as of lately, so if you'd like to stay on top of everything Modern Warfare 2 while joining the community, I'd love to have you. And two final things, we'll be live on Twitch most of the day here, grinding out weapon levels and camos, but if you guys want to check it out, we have Twitch drops enabled, so you can get some free stuff just for simply watching the stream, and Make sure you check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage who have an awesome promotion going on right now for Modern Warfare 2's launch, but more on that a little later. Jumping into it, I think the best way to start is simply talking about the best modes to end up playing within Modern Warfare 2 for leveling your weapons. Now, with as much air quote testing as possible, we don't have specific values like we have in the past. In Modern Warfare 2019, you could get a kill, back out and see the exact amount of XP values you had for that kill and whatever else came along with it. So without that specifically, my testing was more so estimates based upon the XP progression bars and fingers crossed those are accurate with what we see in the gunsmith but with as much testing as we could have right now i found the following sort of listing here number one the best mode is invasion number two regular ground war and then three is your 6v6 modes of things like domination hard point search and destroy and so on and so forth but each of these have their own pros and cons each of them have their own sort of benefits and it really comes down to which one you feel the most comfortable with and which you think you can accurately grind out the most with the least amount of interruptions now starting out with that sort of best mode of invasion i'm sure that you've probably seen this strat start to circulate around and fingers crossed this might actually be intentional and the values aren't accidentally busted and as such it won't get nerfed, but just bear in mind that it's very possible this method does get nerfed in the coming days. Call of Duty has a history of knocking the best ways of ranking up weapons down a peg initially after launch, but in hopes that this isn't nerfed or that if it is going to, you can take advantage of it right now while it's still active, Invasion is incredible for weapon XP, even without any XP tokens. I'd wager that you can probably get certain guns done in about an hour, a little bit over an hour, without a token active at all. So if you activate a token, obviously you get it much quicker. So what you want to do is jump into Invasion, and as strange as it sounds, Rounds, don't go for any real players. Focus on the spawn points of the AI because they are, one, considerably easier to kill, two, they barely shoot back, and three, most importantly, they're about the same values as a real kill in regards to XP yield and XP granted. So the absolute best way that you can kind of farm this is if you're able to make your way behind enemy lines, set up attack insert off in the distance, don't try to get into the action of where players are spawning or where they're really focused. Instead, just focus on the outskirts or those AI spawn points. If you can set up attack insert around where those AI are spawning, preferably around maybe an ammo box if there is one around, you can kind of funnel them into buildings or just take them off one by one. The earlier you do this, the better because they don't have any any armor. There is simply like a three to five shot kill at any range. So you'll be able to absolutely farm weapon levels here with this. And again, if you toss on a double XP token, just makes it even quicker. Now, I definitely should add while we're focusing on the AI side here of this, if you can't get into the action with AI, you can't find their spawns or anything like that. You can't get alone with them. If you simply play invasion as well, you chain together regular kills plus AI kills, you're still going to make good progress. You're just kind of putting yourself into that fire a little further instead of taking it as a more chill method to ranking up your weapon. So absolutely, you still can play it getting regular kills. If you're doing that, don't worry, you're still doing well. Now, there is a downside here with this, especially if you do not have attack insert. I think attack inserts are like level 40 unlocks or something like that. So if you're before that, it becomes considerably tougher because you kind of got to play your luck in which you have to hope the spawns are favorable or you stay alive because invasion spawns usually kick you back around your main HQ. But playing on ground war maps, we know how big those maps are, which means you're running for 30 seconds at a time to get anywhere near the action again. So if you get picked off, it can start this vicious cycle of run, die, run, die, and then eventually you end up wasting three to four minutes and you don't even realize it. So that's the only downside. And that's also where ground war comes into play because it's relatively around the same in terms of XP yield. But the big part, obviously the differentiation is there's no AI to sort of chill out and do your grind just alone off in some corner of the map. Instead, it's 
against all players, but you do get to choose your spawn points. You can choose to be in the action the entire time, which is definitely nice. So at that point, it kind of comes down to, do you want to play it a little bit more relaxed or do you want to try and sweat out and get as many kills as possible in a single ground war match? Now, one thing that is interesting here is that tanks actually work towards your XP levels. If you guys remember back within Warzone, one of the big things that everybody did to farm XP levels for weapons was to go into a helicopter, farm supply run contracts, because if you had that weapon equipped as your primary, when you got into that helicopter, all you had to do was just touch the ground and complete that supply run contract. But because you had that weapon as your air quote primary, even while you're in that helicopter, it counted towards your weapon XP. Same thing goes here with tanks in ground war. If you end up getting kills, captures, whatever the case, so long as that weapon that you are progressing is your primary while you're in that tank, it also does progress that as well. I was kind of surprised to see that carry over, but it is something that you can take advantage of. As much as I hate playing with tanks in ground war, it does give some benefit here to it. So bear that in mind. Now, while both ground war and invasion were relatively sort of equal in that XP yield, and it comes down to just which side of the coin you want to play around with that day, 6v6 is something that does work. And of course, that's where we get back into our regular just play the game argument, which sure works. But 6v6 from, again, my as much testing as possible, it was interesting because 6v6 kind of seemed like it was about three kills to equal one kill from ground war or invasion. Now, with 6v6, the pacing is a little bit higher. There is always that action that's going on right there. You spawn near the action. It's not even like where you can choose your spawn and have to walk a little bit further. You're just basically always in there. So it's something that depending on the match, it comes down to how much you can do in a certain match that really dictates how much XP you pull out of it. So if you have a good game, the pacing could maybe match or exceed ground war and invasion. But if you have a bad match, you're definitely going to notice it and it's going to take a little longer. So those are the three sort of main wings that I would focus on here invasion absolutely number one ground war second if you don't want to deal with running for 30 seconds to get back into the action if you don't have attack insert and then 6v6 if you just want to play traditional mp and you're thinking you can go off now as for launchers these are going to be a pain as is but one thing that i did end up seeing is that spec ops is actually pretty solid here for this the survival based mission as well as the i forget what the name of it off the top of my head is the second mission there's a bunch of vehicles you can destroy and there's launchers that are available via the gun benches you can rank these up relatively quickly in spec ops with the xp yield at that grant. So take that into consideration, maybe give that a try. Though, while it seems like not every launcher is available in Spec Ops, you're still going to have to take some in regular MP. I'd still, as a result, highly recommend taking launchers on your person, on your back as your secondary. Right now, early on, while there's still a bunch of things to shoot down and work towards, and also why you can work towards that as you end up progressing other weapons as your main focus. So that said, take that into consideration. There's a couple of more things that I want to talk about here real quick, but before we do, I want to tell you guys about my friends over at Gamer advantage. In the intro of this video, I mentioned that they were doing an awesome promotion. That promotion is that if you use code ESPRESSO right now from today until tomorrow, the 30th, it ends tomorrow at midnight. If you use code ESPRESSO and you pick up any pair of glasses, you end up getting a $50 gift card to use on their site. So essentially $50 in free cash back. You guys have probably heard my pitch about Gamer Advantage. They are the best blue light glasses on the market, and I will swear by that. I absolutely love these guys. I've used their stuff for two years now at this point, and they're a daily driver in my everyday workflow. I've been doing YouTube for 10 years now, and I absolutely Absolutely, over the years have noticed the effects of blue light, eye fatigue, sleep pattern issues. Gamer Advantage has helped all of that. They're the most comfortable, lightweight, and durable frames on the market. So if you guys work at a computer, you're on your phone for prolonged periods of time a day, or whatever the case may be where you're looking at a screen for a long time, they absolutely can help you out. Now, their lenses are clinically proven. They do a way better breakdown of the science here than I ever could. So link in the description below if you guys would like to learn more. But if you want to pick something up, again, Code Espresso not only gives you 10% off your entire order, but right now, for that very limited time, gives you $50 in cash back you can use on their site again. So check them out, link in the description below. But moving on to the rest of the video here, of course, Another big thing that helps you in your XP yield is double XP tokens. That's a no-brainer, but I feel like when we're talking about a comprehensive guide on leveling up weapons, that's absolutely something we need to include. Now, you pair that double XP token that you may have, the hour token, 30-minute token, whatever it may be, with the invasion method. And again, you're ranking up your weapons in sometimes less than an hour, which is an incredible bonus to have because there's 51 weapons in this game right now. There's a lot of weapons to level up before Warzone 2, before or DMZ, all that kind of stuff. So if you have double XP tokens, definitely use them, but in a strategic manner. Know that you're going to be grinding out for 30 minutes to an hour. You're not going to leave and waste any of that. 
Unfortunately, it is something that we don't have the visual timers just yet on the XP tokens, so we don't know how much time we have specifically left, but that absolutely is beneficial here to you. And finally, the last thing I want to touch on here that can help you out in your weapon leveling journey is a lesser known one because it hasn't really been marketed too well, but it is a returning bonus here. That being the PlayStation Party Up bonuses continuing on into this game. We've seen them in the last couple of years here, but again, we hadn't seen anything officially stated up until recently. Now, what this bonus grants is 25% bonus XP for weapons weapons, not your overall rank, but weapons in, in the case of this, yeah, it's pretty awesome to have if you party up on PlayStation or if you end up partying up with someone on PlayStation. So your entire party could play on PlayStation, but also if you just have that one friend who's on PlayStation, you could get them to join up and then give you that extra 25% bonus XP for those weapons as well. You'll absolutely see an incremental increase on that. That's a solid boost here. While it's not 50 or 100, not doubling, every four kills, it basically counts as five. And again, with Ground War Invasion, how many of those kills you'll see, that'll rack up so fast and become insanely beneficial. But for now, that's where we're at here at this. That's my sort of guy right now on the best ways to rank up your weapons what i've found the most beneficial so let me know your thoughts down below is there anything you'd like to add to this list anything you think can help out the community feel free to drop your thoughts below but if you enjoyed the video you found it out on insightful do me a favor and drop a like on it if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing ring all things modern warfare 2 once again thank you so much for half a million subscribers the other day that is insane to consider but thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you later for some more guides and tutorials but for now take care stay frosty go rank up your weapons and peace